So, back in the day, you older folks know that, hey Brock, when we used to change the timing, we used to rotate the distributor to get more timing or less timing on our car, or V8, or whatever. And on our engines, we used to rotate the plate on the, on the crankshaft, we used to advance the timing or retard the timing with the ignition plate on the side of the motorcycle. Now, we use laptops. You don't even take screwdrivers and pliers with you to the racetrack anymore. We need a laptop. So it's really cool to, to really get a picture, a graphical picture of what's going on inside the engine. So I decided to draw this out just to help you guys see it in a different light because we look at the laptop, we look at the keys, we look at the maps, we look at a downloadable map, we look at my competitors sell, they sell maps, they give away maps. You buy a cam, you get a free map. But listen, that's cool, but look, I would like for us to understand exactly what it's doing. Like, um, like a tuning issue for, say, TTS or uh, Thunder Max or um, Power Commander or whatever we use. We change the numbers in that, in that computer to affect what the engine's seeing. And everybody talks about rich and lean. They talk about air-fuel ratios. They talk about what's the correct air-fuel ratio. Just so you would know, George Bryce at Star Racing uses horsepower output and performance as the right number. Air-fuel ratios might be 12 and a half to one, might be 13 to one, might be 13 and a half to one, but where it makes the most power is where we set it. And every gasoline and every engine wants it a little bit different because you can look up on the internet and it'll tell you what the stoichiometric numbers are for the gasoline and for the E85 and for methanol and for nitro, but that's not what your engine may want. You gotta move it, advance or retard, you gotta add fuel, richen it and lean it to get the most power and the best performance. So that's a different story for another day, the, the fuel injection. Right now we're gonna talk about ignition, okay? At TDC, when the piston's all the way at the top, we can advance the timing to where we light the spark plug too soon. If we light it at 45 degrees on 89 or 91 octane gasoline, we can build up cylinder pressure while the piston's going up for TDC after we light the spark plug. Think about it, we're lighting the spark plug before TDC. 15 degrees before, 30 degrees before, 45, we have to light the spark plug early in order for us to get peak cylinder pressure after TDC. We want peak cylinder pressure about 11 to 15 degrees after top dead center. Some engines really love it at 11 degrees, some engines love it at 15 degrees, but almost every engine is in this range right here of where they want peak cylinder pressure. That's after top dead center. Now that's at, at full throttle, full RPM, we're gonna, our target to make the most power is around 15, 13, 14 degrees after top dead center. So how do we get that? Well, we can accelerate the charge with high swirl combustion chambers with different shaped piston domes. We can also accelerate this by um, using different fuels. They sell some really, really fast burning fuels. 87 octane that we buy at the pump is a really fast burning fuel. It produces a lot of energy. It makes a lot of heat but it gets into this red zone. And this is detonation right here, and there's a few names for it. Detonation, pre-ignition, auto-ignite, and pinging. These are all bad news. If you're an engine builder, you hate this right here. This inside the engine going. That's what's making these marks right here. It hates it. You can get pre-ignition, detonation, auto-ignite, and pinging by lighting the spark plug too soon. We tell the ignition to fire the plug too early, and therefore we get peak pressure sooner. Now, the bad news about this at TDC is the connecting rod straight up, the crankshaft straight up, piston straight up, and when you get peak pressure over 2,000 PSI and intermittent pressure spikes, it will blow the head gaskets out, it will blow the rod bearings out. It's an ugly time. 